If you're using Chime CRM for your real estate business, you might be wondering and struggling with why it is that you cannot get people to respond to your campaigns, to your drip campaigns, or maybe you don't have any drip campaigns. Here's the thing, you need to have a drip campaign and two weeks is not enough, like most of our CRMs have. And lots of times the drip campaigns that are in the existing CRMs that we have, and again, I don't know what you have, if you're using Chime, maybe your company's provided you some, uh, maybe you tried to write your own, maybe you're not using them at all. But either way, I wanna show you how to create your own and I'm also gonna show you how to get access to some really good ones that actually do work. So let's get on it. Two ways to build your drip campaign inside of Chime. And the first way is to just go and add the templates to the campaign as you're building it. I personally don't like doing it that way. And the reason is we want you to keep your templates because you might use them again. And the only way to really save your templates is by going in and setting up a template library first. So I want you to go and build the templates first and then create the campaigns. So, um, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we go to build a campaign. So to get started building your campaign, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move me. Well, I gotta find somewhere to, find. I don't wanna hide me because I like seeing you. Um, so we're gonna go up to settings here to get started. So click on the settings. You're going to go in your, well, you're in your Chime account. You're watching for the settings. Over on the left-hand side, you're going to scroll down until you see the email templates. Now you've got email, smart plans, call, and text. So right now, we're going to focus only on the email templates. And I'm going to start building a seller campaign in this account of mine that I have. And so um, that's what I'm going to do to get started. So I'm going to start with my seller templates that I need to get started. You see I've added a few here already. So we're going to um, make sure that there's a few things we want to make sure we do. We want to name it so we know it's a seller for the seller campaign. And then we've got the content of the email, which is basically here. And then there's modification information here. Okay, so you can see the important thing is, is we need to be able to find these templates later. So that's why we want to make sure when we're naming them that we always make sure, is it a buyer, is it a seller, or, you know, what's this campaign for? So depending on where you're getting your drip campaign content from and I, by the way i do sell it so if you want it's at realestatedripmail.com um, you can go there and get my campaigns or if you're building your own just make sure that you're using a naming process that you can easily find these when you go to build your templates out in the smart plans so that's the big thing you'll also note that i put a star here and one of the reasons i do that is because if you are also using um, drip campaigns that are from the, um, the library in here depending on what campaigns are available in your account um, these will identify them as your templates so it makes life a little bit easier i've also been known to put my initials at the beginning but i like the star because most of the time alphabetically they will show up at the top of the list in a lot of our CRMs because I build drip campaigns in every CRM there is out there. But um, okay, so let's start there and we're gonna click on the settings and then add a template, all right? Now in this case, we are in the email area. So you'll see here you have an option for a name. That's the name of the email template and then the subject line. And the subject line is key obviously and then the body of the email. So I recommend that you type up your drip campaigns ahead of time in a Word document or some sort of document that you can copy and paste from. So I'm going to go ahead over to my drip campaign that I've already got set up. And again, I sell these, so if you want them, you can. I'm going to give you a couple of free ones here at the top so you can see what we've done. But in the seller campaign, how I've got it set up, I'm just going to highlight um, the, this, this up here is the actual name of the template. And you will also see that I'm putting a timing on it as well so that when I go to build it, I know from the name what the timing is supposed to be, okay? Uh, the other thing I've done is put the subject line in here and I've also put the fields in ahead of time so that I don't have to go and build those fields and take the time and hunt and peck to find them over in Chime. So the fields are here. And then I always put the first name in, always, always, always put the field in. So in this case, I'm going to just highlight this entire thing and the signature line is also there. So I'm going to, and then I'm going to copy it. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go back to, uh, my, um, my template. So I copied everything from down. This just makes my life easier when I do it this way. And I don't have to go back and forth and back and forth. And now I know this is the name of it. Whoops. I got to highlight this. I'm going to cut it, 
and I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm going to highlight the subject line. I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm going to go here and just remove the spaces that I've created. Now, whatever font you want to use, that's up to you. I might suggest you try to grab the font from what you had done and make sure that the font's what you want over in Word. It may transfer over. If you want to change it up, you can do that. But at this point, I'm happy with what this is. So it's pulling in the first name field. And if you want to put the field in at this point, I mean, I don't recommend it. You're going to go over here. To, anyway, you're going to click on the lead variable and then um, pick out the first name field and it will pop it in. But see, I don't have to mess with all that because I've created it already in this email templates that I've already created. So I don't have to worry about doing that again. That's why I'm talking about saving time. Same thing here with your signature. Now, could you type up your signature line here and just have it? Yes, you could. My concern about doing that though is if you do it, and you change brokerages or some information in your signature line changes, you're going to have to go into every single email to replace that. And you don't want to do that. So I suggest you just put in the signature field and make sure that your profile area here in the system has your signature set up the way you want it. That way, if you ever go and change brokerages or anything changes, all you got to do is go to that one signature line and it will replace in every email you send out. Okay. So the other thing I want to recommend you do is make sure that the spacing of your email turns uh, copies correctly. Sometimes it doesn't always. It looks like it's fine on your document, but the spacing's not right over here. So make sure you scroll down and, and look at it. And you can click the preview of it here to see how it looks, which I would suggest you do so you can make sure that it looks okay. And then once it's done, you hit save. I mean, that's it. Now you'll notice that it's in the list now and I can tell this is a seller. It's the new registrant. And when I go to build it, I'll be able to see all of this um, as well as the timing. So you can see here, I typed in delay two on this email because I know I need to delay two days before I send the next one out. That's the way Chime's set up when we go to build it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna add um, a couple more. I'm gonna add like um, two more templates in here. So we're gonna add just so we have something to work with. All right, so I'm going to click on that, add a template. I'm going back over to my emails and I'm going to click on this and this. Oh, that's a text. So we're going to skip over that for right now. We'll get to the text here in a minute. I'm going to do all the emails first and then I'm going to go back and do the text. Just makes my life way easier and it'll be way faster for you. Okay, let's go back now to here and we do it all again. And so we're going to, so you can see I've got a delay of three days on this one. Copy, oops, actually I'm going to cut that, but I can cut it here in a minute. And then um, this will be a, a, a cut. And we will paste it in. And then I'll just delete that. Okay. All right, now I just check the spacing, hit the preview for good measure, right? The other thing you'll note is I am pulling your website information in. Same story here. Um, you don't want to put your website in typed by hand in case you change your website or your brokerage or something happens. If you're using your broker website and you change companies, you're going to have to mess with it again. So don't do that. Okay. Um, signature line, all's good. Hit save. See how fast this goes? You get in a roll, you're going to get these in here. All right. Uh, all right. Cool. Let's go now over and add a text template. So I'm going to click on the text templates. And you can see I've added a couple already. And I'm going to go over to my... Uh, back over to my table where I've got everything in and I'm going to grab this text. So again, we don't have a subject line on text, right? So I'm just copying the name of it and I'm just going back. Actually, pick that back. We need a text template. You need not auto text, not welcome auto text. You want at text templates and click add. And now we're doing it. Now we're doing it. Okay. Make sure you catch that. Let's see here. When I work on my laptop, the screen is much smaller. For these old lady eyes, it's not so fun anymore. <laughs> I'm getting older. I'm actually 60 today. As a matter of fact, turned 60 today. So you're getting a birthday video from me. Um, so in here, you have an option to add an image um, if you want to. Um, so it's just something to consider. There's the variables again. If you want to add an image, you can add an image. I wouldn't get too crazy with all this though, because sometimes people don't get all this stuff. You also note you have a 160 character limit um, and seven characters per text with special characters if you're going to add characters and things. So 
that's not unusual for CRM companies because it costs money for every text that goes out. So um, they're limiting it. So that's not surprising um, with the save. All right. So um, we've got that now. Um, you see how I've named it? All right. Uh, so we've got two emails and one text. Okay. So that ought to get us going so I can show you how to set up the campaign. So you just keep going and get all your emails in first, then come in and put all your texts in. Okay. Now let's go add the campaign. Let's go create the campaign. I take, we can actually stay in the settings. I think about it, it makes life a little easier. If you go to settings, stay in the settings and go over to the smart plans. And then here's, you're going to start adding your smart plans. So we're going to add a new one. And we do want to make sure it's a standard plan. Now let's take a look at these. New Year, Christmas, Valentine, specific date, birth date, close date, custom field. Um, right now, none of these pertain to what we're doing because we're creating a long-term general seller campaign. Uh, that's not going to work for any of these because of the way that these are scheduled. These are recurring plans that will recur, but it only is going to set it up so that it will send like one thing on a certain time of year, which we really don't want to do. So we're going to use the standard plan that's non-recurring, that's flexible, that you can use for any kind of lead. Hit start. And then we need to put a plan name in. So again, I'm going to put in um, seller general uh, new lead campaign or something like that. Now, when a seller lead comes in, usually a seller lead is what's my home worth or something along those lines. Somebody you're trying to get somebody to fill out a form and you know it's usually that case now if you have other ways that you're getting leads in here this particular email and text that go out right off the bat may not work for that okay so just keep that in mind um, so you might need to change up that then I would suggest you pick out this and this is for search purposes all right now if you are a team then you would pick a team plan if you want to share these with your team if you are not a team and just pick my plan um, in my case, I can tell you, if you buy my campaigns, you need to get a license for your team. You cannot just buy my campaigns for you and your entire team without having a license for the entire team. So just a heads up, okay? Um, app application conditions. At this point, I am not going to talk about the application conditions, but you certainly can, and it's all going to be based on how it is that lead is getting into the system and where it's coming from because you don't want a seller campaign to go on for a buyer you don't want a seller campaign like this to go on for a closed client so there's going to be conditions that you're going to want to set up for this particular campaign so i don't know your business you need to know your business and what's going to make sense for that so if you click on this you'll have options to be able to set that up for what you want to use this campaign for again I'm using an example here for a seller but depending on what you're building it's got to set up so that if a lead happens to match those conditions that campaign will go on so just learn how to do that and I'll do another video on that later but right now I don't have time to mess with that because I want to get this uh, how to build a campaign done for you all right, and you have an option to auto pause a campaign when the lead responds it i'm going to talk to you about this when the lead responds an outbound call is logged the leads pipeline changes the tags that triggered the smart plan are deleted or the the source of the lead changes okay if you want my two cents on this i'm not a fan of most of these the only one i would probably con consider uh would be this one um and maybe this one, if you're using that, um, if the pipeline changes and they're no longer a standard like new client and you move them to a closed client, yeah, sure, that makes sense. Turn it off. But that means you have to physically come in here and change that pipeline up, right? So without doing that, the campaign's still going to run. So if you're going to use it, make sure you understand what it is you have to do to change it. Um, the tags that triggered the smart plan are deleted. Well, I guess if there's a reason they're deleted out of there, you might want to turn it off too. The rest of these I wouldn't do necessarily. And the reason is, is because if somebody responds to you, that doesn't mean you want the campaign off. Okay. If somebody, if you logged a call, that doesn't mean you want the campaign off. And that's the thing I see a lot of, oh, if I get a text, I want to turn the campaign off. But what if the text says I'm driving right now? I don't like that. I think it's up to you to determine whether that should shut off because now 
you're losing opportunities to stay in front of people if you don't um, remember to come back in and turn it back on. So I'd rather see you turn it off, leave it on, and worry about it later if an email goes out by accident. <laughs> At least you can apologize, say, oops, sorry, you know, um, but otherwise you're, this is automatically going to shut off. And how many times is that going to happen? It could happen a lot. And then the next thing you know, they're not getting, a lot of your leads aren't getting anything from you and you don't know why. So I want to leave it like this. That's what I would do. That's my suggestion. Okay. Do what you want though, but that's my two cents. I've been doing a lot of this. I would not, I wouldn't touch it past this. All right. Now we're ready to build a campaign. So the first thing is, is every time a new lead comes into the system, which we're going to use this campaign for, we want them to be communicated with pretty much immediately. Um, so I'm just going to leave this very, they're, all, they're kind of automatically all set to immediately here. But um, so I'm going to leave this one at immediately right now. But if I didn't, I would pick something else. Now, you do have a choice to say, do I want it to go during a certain time window? This is an email. I don't care. I'm going to send it. Um, if it's a text, I might consider something else. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Uh, then you could wait. If you wanted to, you could put a delay. So when I talk about that timing as a delay, that's how Chime sets up their drip campaigns. So I'll, when we put in the next email and next text, I'll explain this a little bit further. It's based on delays. It's not based on the day that the drip campaign started, like some of the other CRMs are. Okay, so be careful about that. So it's going to start immediately after the plan starts and whatever criteria you set up or manually turn it on, it's going to go. All right, now notice here, if I don't put in a template, I have to put it in now. Well, you'll notice all I'm getting a choice to do here is to actually put in the subject line. This is why I don't like doing it this direction. Instead, I'm going to go over here to the templates and I'm going to go, oh, let me get me out of the way. I'm going over here to the templates now and I'm going to find it. And you can actually type in seller and all of your seller templates are going to pop in. That's going to make your life so much easier. And you can see right here, seller one, boom, done, done, right? Okay, how much easier is that? Um, while we're in here, I also wanted to, uh, and I was going to bring it up earlier, but as far as the other things you can add to your email, if you want to add it, you ha have a choice to um, put in a video. If you want, you have to insert a YouTube video, which if you have video you want to add, I think it's amazing, do it. You have emojis. I wouldn't get too crazy with that. Uh, by the way, I also want to point out that I do put the first name in the subject line. I think it's really important that you do that because they will stop and see. If they see their name in the subject line, people are going to stop. You're going to get more opens. Uh, also, links in your emails, important, but not too many because it could cause it to go into the spam. But I do like links because many of the CRMs out there will track those clicks. Um, so just keep that in mind that you have that option, okay? No idea what this thing here is floating around on my screen for, I don't know what that is. Um, but hopefully that will go away here in a second. Uh, all right, now if you have more than one person in the system and you want all the family members to get this, then go ahead and click on that if you think that you're gonna have CCs and things, oh, so I would do that. All right, um, that's it, that's it on that. Now we're gonna add a step. And the next step is going to be that text that I created because I like to send an email and a text at the exact same time when I do the, uh, my campaigns because some people are more apt to respond to a text than they are over an email uh, or the other way around. And if you send them both at the same time and they happen to respond to your text and then they go in their email and see the email and go, wait, why is she emailing me? Well, the, oh, oh yeah, they, she emailed me at the same time. Okay, fine, great. So I usually will do that. So I'm going to send this at the exact same time. Um, now, you'll have to come in here now and click on immediately so that the text will go at the exact same time. Okay. So now this one's going to be a text. So I need to come over here and pick out text and then send a text message to my lead. Okay. Now, this auto text thing, um, honestly, I'm not 100% sure yet what that's going to do for you, and I'm going to leave that for another video. Uh, I know there's some AI, um, and I don't want to actually have the system do that on this particular training. So I'm going to come back and, and do another training on this later. Okay, But um, you can see the other things that you can do as well if you want. Uh, you can have the system change the pipeline. You can change a group, start another smart plan. 
I'm not getting into all that right now. It, honestly, I just think it's just too much. Oh, there's the AI action. Um, and so I'm going to leave all that for right now because I don't want this all to be part of this particular campaign that we're manually building. But we will definitely get into this at a later date, including the Zap integrations and all of that stuff. Okay. Uh, but right now we're just doing an email and a text campaign. Okay. So, um, we are then, uh, gonna go ahead, go over and pick out the, um, template that we've created. So we need to actually find the template for that we created. Let's go get that. Okay, I have to come back and fix that because I don't, I'm going to use an auto text instead. Okay, so now we're going to add the text. I don't want to wait. I want this to send immediately, like I was saying. And so we're going to click immediately. And then from the list drop down, we're going to pick auto text so that we can pull up the templates. If you click the regular text text, you're only going to be able to type it in. Again, you're not going to be able to save it as a template. So click on auto text. And then we're going to hit template. And we're going to go find that. So I know I had a seller in here. So I'm just going to type seller so it'll show up. And there it is. Okay, and then you're going to save. Now, I did want to point out um, that you do have other things you can do at this point. If you look at this drop down, you have an option to do all these other things. This is a simple email and um, text campaign. You have AI assistance um, actions, whether or not you have it in your account. I'm not sure. I know in my Chime account here, as I work at Real Broker, um, we have those, so that's nice and convenient, but your account may not have those things. So look through here. But for right now, we're not going to do anything more fancy than this. It's going to start getting convoluted, and I don't want to confuse you. So we're just going to leave it right here the way it is. And uh, I'll, we'll come back and do training on the rest of these things at another date, okay? But so we're just focused right now on emails and texts just to get the basics done, okay? Uh, all right, done. That one's done. Next, add another step. All right, now we're going to go put that second email in. All right, so I need to go find it. So the before I put any timing in, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go find that second email that I set up, and it's right here. And uh, when I add that email, you can see that the delay I have on it is two. You can see it here. The delay is two. That's two days. So I'm going to go here and go to the two-day delay and move this to two. Now, what time you send, I don't care, but if you want kind of the stats, I would send it sometime between like 10 and 11. Usually that's a good time because in the morning people come in and delete things in their inbox. If you send it too early, they might just delete stuff, right? And um, so, and same thing after lunch. So if you're going to send it in the afternoon, I'd probably wait till like two or three kind of thing. And what the best days of the week, again, you can't really do that on this campaign because you don't know what day you're starting this campaign on. But best days of the week to send emails are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, just as a heads up. Um, all right, there, that's done. So that's what you're doing is you're basically either going to do the auto email or you're going to do the auto text. We're not going to worry about conditional questions and that, but you could add more conditions. I'm not going into all that right now. I don't think necessarily at this point for this kind of a standard campaign that we're building, it's that important. Again, something I'll worry about at a later date. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think I lost that because I was talking to you and clicking on stuff. So, uh, seller one. All right. And we're going two days. Um, so I will pick a different time when I want this to start. I'm just going to go ahead and pick 10 on this and send it at 1030. All right. And then hit the save. So that's exactly what you're going to do. You're just going to keep going and going and going until you get everything in. And if you need to come back and edit it, you just come back here and click on this and click to edit. And then you can come in and edit this and add more, or remove stuff or whatever. So um, it should work just fine. Now, another thing to think about, if for some reason you've got a template in here and you decide you want to change its location in the campaign, right here you can actually grab this thing and drag it around on the far right side here. So you can do that. Also, if you want your assistant to send this letter versus you sending it, then you can click on this. you got to have your assistant in here and all that, so keep that in mind. This is just a basic training on how to set this thing up. I just wanted to show you 
how to do this in the best way possible and then that way you're going to have good practice of getting it done and then not wasting a lot of time as you're building it because it's going to be real time consuming otherwise if you don't follow my instructions okay and then when you get ready to turn it on you just have to have a lead in here and you can just click it on for somebody we'll go ahead and do that let's go ahead and check that out okay so i just came into i went to people i picked chose somebody it's just a test i'm looking at um so what i wanted to show you though is that we want to add a smart plan to this person manually we're going to go up to smart plans and then we're going to click a plus right and here you want to go to my plans but you got to keep in mind if this is a buyer you're only going to see the buyer campaigns in here if it's a seller you'll see the seller campaigns you have so you have to be sure that you're clear on that let me close this out so you can see how to fix that if you want to go in and edit this person then um, you'll go to edit the person and you can see exactly what their buyer or seller or what you add, well, how you added them is going to be the real key okay how you add so you'll come over here and you'll click on this and you'll just check to see so if it's a seller you're going to see the seller campaigns if i switch it over to buyer i'm going to see the buyer campaigns so i'm going to go ahead and hit buyer just so you can see the difference so if i go back to the smart plan then I hit plus you're only going to see the buyer so if i go here my plans there's the buyer campaign that i created and so if i click on that that should turn it on and then you're going to hit start and so that should go on um, and assuming you set you didn't set up any other conditional stuff to keep it from running or whatever uh, it should go on now really key if you're new to chime make sure that you got your phone number set up that you have your signature line set up uh, and that you're um, if you're using the team stuff that you've got permission to use certain things so whatever it is you're doing i think that's the real key here so anyway um, so that is the down and dirty on how to create a quick campaign inside of chime uh, i do as i said offer drip campaigns you can get them at realestatedripmail.com make sure that you subscribe to this channel and keep an eye out for more chime lessons and tutorials because i am excited to be able to share these with you i've got more coming so we'll talk to you soon thanks bye